This week's episode of Unicorn Warriors Eternal was quite the shocker, so after the revelations about Melinda's family, I wanted to go over all of my theories for what exactly is going on here. My name is Deep Cut, hit that subscribe button, and let's dive in. This recent episode of Unicorn Warriors Eternal revealed Melinda is actually the daughter of Merlin, which shouldn't have been too surprising, as Melinda is one letter away from being Merlinda. I was still surprised, but the bigger shock that came was in the form of Melinda's mother, who in the show is named Morgan. This seems to be a play on Morgana from Arthurian legend, where she is Arthur's half-sister, but also the rival and often equal to Merlin, who is an advisor to Arthur. Here they are lovers, leading to the birth of Melinda, and her inheriting the dark magic we know her for in the show. All of this came to us in the form of time travel with Emma, getting a chance to meet Melinda for herself and see what made this mission to her so important. Until now, Melinda seemed like something of a blind hero, the kind who exists to fight evil for no other reason, but this episode gave her every reason to get caught up in this never-ending battle. Back in episode 1, we were first introduced to the characters fighting this green spirit that takes many forms in ancient Egypt. The timeline of the show is mostly meant to fit our own, but with the many myths of the world being connected to this trio and the green energy that they fight, explaining perhaps the different sky we see deep in this past. Here in the past, the unicorn trio are fighting this green spirit that attacks Melinda, causing her to hear a voice calling her name. Up until now, we weren't sure who that was, but it appears to be the same voice of her mother Morgan. At this point, Melinda is an adult, so it would have been a long time since she last heard her mother's voice. In the recent episode, we saw that this green evil spirit appears to be Morgan herself, after a battle against her own daughter. Melinda had the use of her dark magic at a very young age, but Merlin apparently kept this a secret from her mother Morgan. Merlin implies that Morgan has evil intentions for the power, which makes sense given Morgana's adversarial and villainous role in Arthurian legend. Despite Merlin's concerns, however, Morgana claims that she really cares about taking care of her child, and thus she tried to get Melinda to give her the power. This led to a battle that ended with Morgana exploding into the green spirit monster and jumping away, something that makes sense considering the green dress that the green spirit seems to wear in the present, much like Morgan's. Melinda had a fascination with magic and playing with powers she wasn't ready for, as we see her messing with time to try and send Emma back to the future, something Merlin scolded her for doing relatively recently before Emma had apparently traveled there. Time and time travel seem to be important aspects of Merlin's powers, something Melinda has come to despise. In episode 1, Melinda showed some content for Merlin when he was time traveling, giving the impression that he's left her hanging at some of her most distressed moments just like here. This is hard not to take personally for Melinda, who would feel her father only sees her as a tool to complete magical work. While Merlin only does this because he probably knows through time magic what will happen next and that she will be okay, it makes him seem unloving and uncaring. It would seem since turning her mother into the green spirit, Melinda had become a lot more depressed and spent her life training her powers so that she could one day defeat her mother. Unfortunately, her mother would continue to reform and return in different eras of man, always trying to attack humans, and thus Merlin devised the method of inserting the memories and powers of the unicorn trio into new human bodies with the help of Copernicus, a robot from the future. The timeline, as I said, is supposed to be similar to our recent history, but making use of the real-life myths and legends to inspire the deeper past and the fantasy elements of the show. The show opens in ancient Egypt, but with the sky being so different, with a giant crescent and two smaller or closer planets or moons. Human history is a bit hard to pinpoint, but our more complex civilizations started to pop up about 5,000 years ago, with civilizations like Mesopotamia and, of course, Egypt. In ancient Egypt, we see that Melinda is an adult fighting the green serpent for the first time, but as a child, she seemed to live in a medieval Europe-type location. Many mythologies point to a time before a global disaster or flood where civilization was more advanced. Not more advanced than we are now, but more advanced than the people like Noah who might have repopulated the earth after the flood, only bringing so much with them into this new destroyed world. It would seem that as a child, Melinda lived in a rather developed world, but that when she turned her mother into the green spirit, it caused a lot of destruction, perhaps even the great flood that supposedly made these civilizations all start over. It would make sense considering every time the green spirit comes back, we see it attacking humans, and it would likely destroy them all if it wasn't for that unicorn trio stopping her. It would seem that ancient history in this world is rooted in our real-life mythology, but most of modern history from that flood onwards matches our own, but with the unicorn trio and the green spirit being weaved in. 
The current incarnation of the characters live in 1800s London, but one of the central conflicts in the show is there suddenly being a rise in technology that didn't originally exist in the future that Copernicus came from. Because of this, the two descendants of Melinda and Idrid who were meant to take their new forms had to be skipped, and instead, seemingly random people were chosen as the vessels for the Unicorn Trio. All of this seems to be because the Green Spirit had somehow mastered time travel or an understanding of robotics, and thus was able to change human history. By getting her hands on robots, the Green Spirit was able to dig up Copernicus with the intent of destroying him before he was supposed to wake up himself. She, of course, was not successful that day, giving him enough time to put the memories of the trio into new bodies. However, he never really got to explain to them why things had to be the way they are. Copernicus, like Merlin, seems to have an understanding of time and how to change it, and when he was awoken early, he somehow understood that the original people meant to receive the trio's memories would have met their demise, and the green spirit would have won, and that these three people Copernicus chose would lead to the ultimate good ending, even if it seemed tainted by tragedy and a lack of reason along the way. Then, of course, in today's episode, Copernicus was absolutely destroyed, something I imagine that he foresaw in his own calculations, knowing that this would be the last time he would be needed if everything went according to plan. Without Copernicus, the Unicorn Trio would not be able to put their essence into new bodies, much less switch out the bodies they are in, and thus, if the Green Spirit is not defeated in this lifetime, they may not be able to come back and stop her again. But if this was all part of Copernicus's plan, his death itself may be what helps push the trio to their eventual victory. Melinda's mother Morgan still has some backstory to give us before we can truly understand her motives, but it seems that despite her evil streak, some part of her human self seemed legitimately interested in protecting Melinda from the evil magics that she inherited. Merlin, however, had an understanding of the future, and while Morgan's understanding of the powers were very grim, Merlin probably saw beyond that horrible amount of pain and suffering, where there was a future where Melinda and the entire world is better for her having those dark powers. For some reason, he did not foresee what would happen to Morgan and the endless cycle that Melinda gets caught in for the rest of time. The Green Spirit has taken many forms, but one interesting one is that of the Fox, who appears to be something of a separate entity at times that the Green Spirit rules over or controls. There is an entire spiritual world on top of the physical one that only Sang has access to, so it can be pretty uncertain what exactly is going on with this Green Spirit, but I imagine the episodes that will come will get more pieces to its puzzle. Perhaps Morgan is still in there, even trying to communicate with her daughter, as we heard in episode 1, and all of this is part of Morgan's own plans to somehow set Melinda free from her powers. But what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time.